Hello, and welcome back to the 186. Uh, this week, we return to our How to Beat series. Uh, and given that raw efficiency is king in X-Wing these days, we thought we'd kill two ships with one seismic charge by pitting two metalists against each other. So we have Polish ace, Philip Vucic, and he's kindly agreed to join us to take his Thai aggressor swarm up against the ray wings of the 186's own Ed Moreland. Hello, guys. Hello. Hi, how are you? Good, thank you very much. Um, Lloyd couldn't make it again today, uh, so Cormac uh, is once again stepping in to provide the expert analysis. Hello, Cormac. Hello. So we join the game here with rocks down, um, the Sloan Swarm in place, and we just started to see there uh, Ed putting his ships down. So um, given that, why don't we start with you, Ed? Uh, you look like you're declining the joust here, uh, which is probably a good call. Um, what was your game plan going into the match? So obviously the main plan was to, if possible, kill off the Reaper with Sloan as quickly as possible. While Sloan's out there, the I mean, the A-Wings want to be taking two actions a turn and that's stressing them. And I'd re much rather not be getting sort of modded shots back in. And similarly with Ray, um, with sort of red boost sloops and keeping stress a lot of the time with the title is going to be stressed and she'll burn down that much quicker so the hopeful plan is to get ray in behind the swarm burn down fair off hope maybe with the help from a procket from one of the a-wings and hope that we haven't lost too much of ray or the a-wings by the time we've done that <laughs> Cool. And Philip, maybe we can throw to you here. You're running the Sloan Swarm. We've seen Sloan Swarms of various varieties um, since the start of second edition, really. I think, personally, that this is probably the, the best one out there at the moment. Um, why don't you talk us through the list? And in your opinion, what makes it so good? Uh, sure. Mm, recently, be, uh, before I participate in the last uh, GSP tournament, I discovered Mm, that in price of 28 points, Thai aggressors are really efficient uh, because in uh, six point more uh, compared to mm, cheapest Tie fighter, you have additional one hull, additional shield, and additional second arc. Right? Okay, it's it's uh, range one two, but but still it's second arc, so. It opened a lot of possibility to to fly and uh, to block opponents' uh, ships. Yeah, and <laughs> there is a uh, five of them with uh, Sloan, so they are really tanky and have a pretty good dial. So so um, I decided to uh, to give it a try, um, made to to get to the uh, top cut. So I'm. Pretty, pretty happy with, with that list. Cool, yeah. I took part in the uh, Fly Better podcast, Jank Tank, a few months ago and had an aggressor in my list. I was really pleasantly surprised with how good it was. If you could take a six-point upgrade on ties that did all of that, I think people would be howling that it was undercosted. Brutal raw efficiency there. Um, yeah, and people don't see value in tie aggressors since, I think, first wave, right? Because it's it was called the war ship in the in the second edition at the beginning and they even didn't uh try to uh, to do something with that ship right yeah they, it felt like it was kind of left to languish a bit at the start with nobody paying attention to it so we can see the first couple of moves coming in here ed turning zizi away there and heading ray and tali up around the corner while philip has banked in to give himself some options ed if we go back to you Given your plan of trying to get at Sloan, how do you feel that the rock placements and, and the first kind of turn have panned out for you? Are you happy with how the board's looking at the moment? Yeah, reasonably happy. With the debris in the sort of middle at the bottom as we look at it, they're not going to jump on Ray immediately. ZZ start in the bottom left because I didn't want them all turning towards Ray straight off. So you leave something there for them to chase. I'm sure Philip knew they were never going to really catch ZZ, but like it's there, it's something. Ray's got in a position where he's starting to get round behind the list, which is the plan is working at the moment, and the rocks are there. So the aggressors are hopefully, yeah, staying away. 
so I'm not losing too much on the approach. Yeah, and this this position actually, with, with how quick Ray is, this is all already looking quite nice, at least for next turn. That uh, debris, which has the focus token on it there, is, is limiting the moves of the aggressor slightly. Um, Philip, at this point, we've talked about Ed's game plan of trying to get a slow. What's your game plan facing Ray Wings? Uh, yeah, for me, the main win condition is to heal Ray as soon as possible and then try to block and, and kill um, a Wings. And in case of, of that uh, rock placement, it's not perfect for me, for Swarm, but it's, it's not bad when it comes to... Uh, again, tie aggressors with another arc because I still can go straight and cover my right side if uh, Ray decide to go hard uh, right and boost or do something crazy. Yeah, it gives you so much security, doesn't it, having that extra firing arc? And just with regards the Reaper, um, how did you land on Captain Faroth? Because I've seen some people, after you had success with it, try variations with the initiative one. Was Faroth to have the initiative three? Was it his ability? Which bit of it were you finding that was the most helpful? In this meta, it's, it's great call because uh, ability is, is great versus another swarms especially on range three obstructed or something like that. And in the most of, of games, I use uh, his ability. So he, he fully paid off. And uh, that additional HAL upgrade is really something that win three or four games on the, on the tournament. And for the 60 points, every piece of upgrade on that ship really pay off. Yeah, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that if you're running this list and you aren't running exactly this far off build you're doing it wrong i think it's perfect um and i think what cormac was getting at and it'd be interesting to hear philip again in that jank tank list uh i had a sloan carrying uh i1 reaper um and i found that it moving first was really restrictive it was difficult to get it to trail into the fight it was either out in front getting shot which is not what i wanted or it was bumping and losing actions um so the I3, is that something you've also found useful, being able to move after the Sino Specialists, or is that less important? I think that the main reason for Ferro is is that he is really tanky. And from my experience, normal initiative one, so uh, that Scarif pilot uh, dies too quickly. Absolutely. And so we can see you guys are taking a bit of time to think about this turn, and it, and it I think that's understandable. It's a very key turn. You know, this is going to be the engagement this turn or certainly the turn after and and game can be won and lost here um we've talked a bit about the raw efficiency the the control element of, of sloan um and all of the free mods of phillips list ed what what makes your list good um so obviously obviously what makes ray good is an awful lot of free mods you have the combination between the force and raise ability, which means you can mod blanks and focuses. Um, you've got rows, which will give you a free target lock, and you've got fin to get an extra dice, which means that if you have a target lock before you fire, you can very easily end up getting raise attack dice plus one hits, um, which obviously is going to put hurt into a lot of ships like usually something like Suntir is very happy to sit at range 3. Like, he'd prefer to be at range 4 and not getting shot, but range 3 should be fine. But when he's getting 4 hits put into him at range 3, it starts to become scary, even if he's got the 4 evade dice. And then, in the A-Wings, they're very flexible ships. I like, the Prockets mean that they can combine with Ray to hopefully put you ahead early game. And they take a lot of killing especially zz who just has obviously gets two focuses a turn rather than just the one so there's a lot of games where you can win it in the opening engage or the turns after that and that at that point sort of yeah like ray hits hard enough that you are ahead in the game and can just try not to lose it from there and how do you find most games go? Is it a case of 
scoring more points than Ray's worth and 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 the a wing staying un, unharmed to kind of take the win or are you tabling people with all of that kind of raw punching power the best games you're tabling people like if you get ray ahead enough then essentially they then don't have the ships left to do damage and you can just clear up a lot of the close ones it's very much um ray will die at some point there's only one green dice and is the obvious first target um so it's making sure that you score enough points that losing ray and maybe losing half of an a-wing you're ahead at the end the big thing about the list when flying it is no one wants to be in that raised front arc which can simplify the game a lot when you're facing aces they could be anywhere but when you know even if they're moving after ray where you're going to be put the arc or where it's most likely you're going to put the arc you can suddenly take a lot of the board and go well they're not going to be there and then that suddenly makes your decision with all the other ships a lot easier yeah so you're almost using ray as that kind of control piece and you know there's a, a region of the board that the enemy aces are going to fear to tread cool so we can see uh these moves coming out and um relatively conservative but i think very sensible kind of going straight with those uh front three aggressors there philip gets them round that debris cloud which i was saying causes them problems uh this turn um and keeps their options open for the following turn interesting to see what yellow does here uh, red still has options to go past that with the straight but if yellow banks in he's a little bit more restricted i think the say. advantage that the dorsal taurus here is if ray does turn inwards the two dice of the dorsal taurus usually is not that helpful but against the one agility ship it will still plink down ray um and i think going straight here is a very good option because if ray comes in next turn they can just turn towards her anyway and we're seeing a nice linked action there from that aggressor oh and amazingly well judged there philip well done um so lovely barrel roll into evade uh from yellow getting him a nice lane through those uh debris for next turn uh and incredibly well judged one with the straight fitting and then with the sleep relatively near the board edge uh to turn um fair off back around and philip it looks like here as you said you're going for ray um mm -hmm. and she's coming around the corner she's oh. going to get her shots into fair off but um at what cost i think is where i'm kind of thinking at the moment she looks a little bit pinned in maybe for next turn yeah, I had two strategies at, at this moment. Um, one is is more defensively, so I go straight with Reaper and uh, pretend to, to chase ZZ or something or cover him behind the aggressors, or I uh, choose to, to turn him to Ray, and then I force her to stay in the corner, right? And that's one of my tactics when I play against uh, aces because the place where Ray is, there is always like Sontir or Bow or something like that. Always try to go behind the swarm. And then if I turn around, they are uh, stuck in corner and they uh, need to run away or um, they will get blocked. Interesting. And so Cormac, Starting with Philip, I think I really like his position at the moment. He's still threatening these A-Wings coming in, but he can pretty much turn everything back into Ray. Uh, maybe not have everything firing next turn, but the turn after, she's going to be trapped in this corner with not, not many places to go. Um, from Ed's point of view, I think the A-Wings are in a nice position, coming in from two different angles, uh, both being able to, if they want to, turn into the fight next turn. I just wonder about that boost we saw in with Ray. It's committed hard to Ed's goal of getting round and getting shots into Feroff. Um, but it really hasn't given any other options. So if he arc rotated rather than boosted and then maybe sleep and it gives him the ability to run away, obviously you kind of lose out on Ray's punching power if you're if you're not facing this. What do you think about the current game state? So I'm... Um... I would be slightly concerned about Ray being in the corner. Now, the only advantage that she has is blue, green, and brown. Even with the hard turn barrel roll, they're probably going to struggle to get shots next turn. And with um, Corsella on Ray, 
Ed can actually get rid of his stress quite easily. So his dial is actually relatively open. I think the boost probably was a slightly better option at the moment because it might give him the chance next turn to only be taking probably three shots, but in return get a very good shot on the Reaper. Um, and then afterwards, Ray will be then in a bit of trouble, but hopefully by that time, the A-Wings are putting pressure and starting to chip away either at the Reaper or at the aggressors. So I think Ray is not terrible. I think ZZ having to arc towards the back and facing where she is at the moment, I think if the arc was towards the front and we could do the one hard next turn, I think I'd be happier with that. But actually, Ray might get away with this. ZZ was definitely a case of... I assumed I would be further up the board away from that debris field. And then after doing the too hard round, did not stop to check whether the barrel roll was now still a good idea. I was not aiming to have ZZ pointing directly at that debris field at that point in time, but stop and actually think about your actions rather than just do the plan. Yeah, absolutely. It was something we've said on the channel before, but always reassess and always take a, a moment before you do anything. And I think that's one of those, you know, the plan when you're setting dials is to too hard and barrel roll, um, but there was an opportunity to kind of change that plan. I don't mind ZZ's position here, um, actually. And I think the one hard right is is pretty strong. You, the risk, obviously, is that those three aggressors come towards you. But ZZ is, is very tanky. And I think I prefer the one hard right here from ZZ to get her in and firing rather than taking another turn of running away. I think the reason I make that decision is that if three of them have peeled off towards ZZ, then actually you can maybe even afford to lose easy or half as easy because Ray into the back of Philip's list is worth that. Philip, looking at these moves, you're kind of turning down, closing this net on Ray in the corner here. Happy with how things are going so far? Mostly, yeah. One thing that I can improve, it's that three aggressors uh, are too far from Ray, but I choose to, to change tactic because I, I knew it that mm, Feroff now is the main target and he will just die from Ray, right? So um, I choose to use uh, Reaper as a bait and block uh, maybe next turn of Ray and then kill her with all five aggressors. Yeah, and we can see the first shot coming in here. Ray just at range two there in her arc, um, but took the target lock uh, and rerolls to good effect. Two hits and two crits. Uh, as Ray has no green tokens, uh, we get the automatic evade there from Feroff. Uh, he takes two shields and a panicked pilot, uh, which is not ideal. Um, the irony of panicked pilot on Sloan is not lost <laughs> on most players. Who have <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, how does he like it? Right? Um, and we see Ed following up, uh, sticking rigidly to the plan. I think probably reasonable given uh, given the board state. Um, two more dice into Feroff, but at range three obstructed. It, neither of them were great shots, and if I can get it down to five health, that's suddenly a lot more killable. But no luck, not that you were really expecting anything to go through. The panic pilot actually makes a really big difference here for next turn, because Feroff all of a sudden can't be as easily blocking um, can't do the sloop behind Ray. It's a nice crit to get on Feroff in this opening engage. Yeah, no, I especially realise that what it also means is the Reaper isn't stopping, which means that Ray's sloop is definitely going to fit behind. So double stress or not, the Reaper's still got a shot. And actually, uh, because of the sort of idiosyncrasies of how the arcs work, uh, the Reaper at range one rolls two hits, two focus, spends the focus of four and Ray only getting the one paint in return and already uh, takes three shields. So a fairly even trade of damage um, and even trades of damage are not going to do the job for you, Ed. No, absolutely. Like I can spend the blank I get from Thin to get a target lock for the sloop next turn to make sure the damage hopefully goes in. But I was hoping for some blanks, as you always are. And yeah, none there. We get a long range speculative shot into... Tali here, uh, but spends the focus uh, to evade the damage there. Uh, and then the final shot coming here from this aggressor. Um, got the choice. Tali now at range two with no tokens, uh, but you've already done a decent amount of damage to Ray. And Philip, you said at the start that Ray was going to be a target. So are you going to keep firing at her? 
Yeah, but I have uh, some thinking here because the tally have a uh, strain, so I have a uh, modification. That was a tough decision, but yeah, I choose to shoot Ray. And you get the two hits there after spending the focus. And Ray, uh, thankfully for Ed, uh, does at least roll the natural evade, but takes another damage. So, end of firing. And all of a sudden, Ed, I'm not liking your position as much. It's, yeah, not ideal. Like, I didn't want to see four damage going into Ray there. Like, what I'm at least thinking at this point is, with the Reaper going forwards, Ray can sloop behind, Tali can come up with the Procket, and Feroff is Feroff, which is frustrating, but does only have six health left. So the aim is definitely at this point. Ray is going to die sooner rather than later, given the positioning. But if I can get Sloan off the board and then get a few extra shots into some aggressors with Ray before she dies, that will hopefully be enough to put me in a decent position to finish up with the A-Wings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that panic pilot prevent Ferov to, to do ailerons and bank free, right? Yeah. And, and to run away from Slooping Cray and to eventually jam Tali to, to prevent Proton Rockets. Yeah, I if think... I don't know where Ferov is going to be, then suddenly... Well, I probably still would have slooped Ray, but it's a much more of a guessing game. You're much less certain of what you're actually going to get out of it. At this point, did you consider not slooping Ray? Because it seems like the obvious thing to do. You know where Feroff is going to be. You know you can get a shot in our on him. But I'm looking at the position here and I'm actually thinking maybe Ray just doing a three bank, having a shot out the back on Feroff with a target lock maybe with a focus mod for the other shots coming from the aggressors. It does mean that the following turn, you are a little bit more free and you don't maybe give up as much of Ray as easily. Was that a consideration at this point or was it just, I am going to go and get Feroff? I was, I think, definitely focused on Feroff at this point. And especially given Tali can come in with the Procket, it felt like, too good an opportunity to give up yeah and i think for me whilst i don't like zizi's position i'd have much preferred your position had zizi one harder to the right uh, that previous turn i think your move with tali was really nice and keeping her following in behind had she banked in to kind of get a better shot on one of these aggressors she wouldn't be in the position to threaten fair off this turn and i think i would have probably slooped as well although now that cormac has suggested it i think the three bang over the top of fair off and shoot out the rear is maybe the better option. I think the ability for you to then run past the back of the aggressors the turn after this one is really nice. Where here, it looks like even if you kill Feroff, you're going to be trading Feroff for Ray um, and then needing to score a few points with the A-Wings to kind of make up for that. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, we have seen the first mistake I make this turn in that I had definitely told myself, let's use Contraband to get a focus token for Ray just to try and make sure Feroff died and then came around to activating and completely forgot. Nice, nice. Uh, but nevertheless, we start off with the Procket. Um, average is four if you spend the focus. Just get the two slightly under, could push it to three, and you decide not to. Uh, maybe talk us through that decision. So Ray doesn't have a focus. So if Ray is going to kill Feroff, um, would need to get the full five hits in because Feroff guarantees the evade. I was worried about not killing off Feroff and leaving uh, Tali there without a focus, and so slightly backed out of my plan and hoped that like five eighths of the time it wouldn't have made a difference. It obviously, in this case, very much did, as we can see Ray's attack come in. I do get the five hits I would have needed to kill Feroff, and now due to like getting cold feet, trying to play safe rather than. Feroff is dead here, the plan has worked. I've got a Feroff on one health I'm going to have to track down and try and kill. Uh, yeah, that that natural evade from Feroff when Tali with Rocket was crucial. That I... and the hull upgrade, right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> a hull upgrade is, is the best upgrade in that list. But yeah, like if I'd have had the focus, I've checked the probabilities since then. 
I'd have been about 75% to get those five hits or to deal four damage to Feroth. As it was, it was only about 50%. And yeah, if I'd had the focus, I think I definitely would have had the confidence to spend the focus on Tali and carry through with the plan. But I made a mistake, then saw things go slightly underwhelming and the dice got cold feet. And the plan is looking a lot worse at this point than it otherwise might have done. And so we saw the long range shot from uh, ZZ, no damage there. Uh, and this is Feroff's return shot, living on one. Gets hit crit. Uh, Tali rolling three dice here. O opportunity to use her ability, I think. Is an opportunity to use her ability. I think I can count on one hand the number of times I remember Tali is an A Wing with an ability, which really would help. Like, you are paying points for it. <laughs> I mean, her abilities that she's I 5, right? That's what everyone thinks. That's fair enough. I never remember it either. Um, but as a result, does take that one shield uh, and now has a two dice shot coming in. Two hits rolled, but has four evade dice because of the debris. And nicely rolls the two evades there, so no further damage done. I think maybe she's facing one more shot from the green aggressor here, but everything else looks like it's out of range. Oh, no, more than that. So blue at the back, range three obstructed. So this is going to be two dice into five. Tali still has her focus. But another two hits. Uh, another damage here could be pretty disastrous, I think. Um, Spends the focus to take nothing. And is going to have to cross her fingers a bit for this last shot. So Philip deciding to go for the more surefire shot onto Ray. Uh, spends his focus to get two hits. Ray at range three. Uh, and gets just enough. Spends a force. Uh, and takes no further damage. And certainly a better turn for you, Ed, there. Like, uh, upsetting, as you say, to leave Feroff on one. Although you didn't really pay for it in terms of incoming damage on Tali. the fact you're going to have to spend another shot to kill Feroff next turn, I think is is pretty punishing. Um, yeah. Like, Ray is definitely dying at this point. The aggressors are going to come in and burn her down. So I ideally at this point would be going what is my best move to get Ray's front gun pointing at aggressor and let's try and make sure I've got A-wings flying against four aggressors maybe with something bleeding before it goes but yes in this case i am going to have to try and make sure that feroff definitely dies this turn and i think interestingly the panic pilot has actually played into philip's hand a little bit this turn because he doesn't have to ailerons and i'm looking at this thinking a low blue move to bump into tally really does restrict where Ray can turn into the aggressor swarm. So I think Ray's options are really limited this turn, depending on what Feroff does. Yeah, the self bump is really tempting, isn't it? You, you think that Ray is either going to be flying past, at which point not pointing anything, but I think most likely bumping at that point, in which case green and blue, if they bank down between these two debris, can be firing into the side of Ray and potentially taking no damage in return could even get in the way of a hard turn from Tali and you could end up bumping both ships. Uh, Philip, are you kind of considering the self bump here or, or are you trying to sort of run for the hills? I was thinking about about bumping, but I choose to use my last action, right? And to maybe confuse Ed, because I was thinking that you will see that bump and it choose to do some speed maneuver with a wing. And then I can get opportunity to uh, to catch Tally. So I, I choose to, to run with Perov and to secure my position for the next turn in case of uh, catching Ray. That makes a lot of sense. And yeah, I am at this point, well, up until we see Perov move, convinced Perov is doing the bump. And if Ray bumps into Perov, then there's always a possibility that Feroff lives another turn, which is disaster. And I think it's an important point as well that we, we see a lot during X-Wing is that sometimes the obvious move can throw off your opponent so much that you don't actually need to do it. And whilst the bump from Feroff there, I, I was looking at it thinking that is going to be really good equally, 
the fact that Philip can look at this and think, well, Ed thinks I'm going to be doing this. Actually, I can get away, do a jam, and I probably achieve a lot of what I was going to do. It's the the psychological bluffing of X-Wing, really, that you're seeing. So what we've just seen happen there is thinking that he was going to do the bump, I had slooped Ray again with the title, thinking that would just, Tali would move out of the way, and then Ray could sloop in front of Feroff and definitely get the kill. As it happened, I'm surprised Feroff is over there, but Tali is lucky in a position to then block the sloop so that Ray keeps the front arc pointing towards ships. Yeah, and that's the power of having everything at I-5, but also some really nice kind of clear-headed thinking. Unlike the last turn where you kind of committed to a barrel roll because it was the plan at the beginning without thinking about it, you've you've corrected that mistake and things haven't gone as planned and you've, you've used the flexibility of the lift to your advantage and, and stopped Ray in a nice position here with a range one shot into the back of Farrah. And you've got to believe at this stage that she surely has to uh, finish him off. Not a, not a great initial roll though. Uh, so adds the blank here. Uh, and spends it to get the target lock, uh, and is only only needs two hits, but does need two hits because of that automatic evade from Feroff. So spending yeah. the target lock, Oof, and just gets them, able to keep the force, uh, and Feroff is indeed dead. ZZ a little bit late to the party, but now does have a nicely lined up shot. So we're going to see, I presume, a procket here. Yeah, absolutely. If I can halve the aggressor, like I'd worked out on the points that with Feroff dead. Assuming Ray dies and I don't lose points in the A-Wings, I need to get three halves of an aggressor to be ahead. And obviously, once again, three hits from a procket is not what I was hoping for. And one of eight on two green dice, what you expect. So red is, alas, one damage off half. Yeah, tantalizingly close. And, you know, three is not hugely under average but but to get that sort of slightly under average on both the prockets is unlucky and and the first one being under average meant that Feroff lived another turn and this one means that that aggressor isn't halved and and these little things are starting to to look like you're going to be in a slightly tricky position once Ray has died um so we get uh the single dice here i think maybe a slight misplay from you guys that the the sloop should have generated some stress on ray I think I added it, but it might be behind where Ray's ship is. And um, actually, I'm I am misspeaking because I'm thinking there should be rerolls, but obviously not as Sloan is dead and gone. Yeah, Sloan is dead, so yep. Uh, so one one hit there and one evade. Uh, Ray holding on. The more of these shots he evades, the more likely she is to see another turn, and that at this point is really key for you, Ed. I think. Um, yep, absolutely. <laughs> This is an evade, would you believe? Um, <laughs> nice to nice to have the computer tell you. Uh, and now only three shots left. So Ray looking looking pretty good to to survive into the into the next turn. We'd need some quite bad crits here for things to go otherwise. Have the option of a of a shot into a jammed tokenless Tali, um, but decide to continue firing into Ray, which I think is the right choice. Another single hit. Attack dice not really doing you any favors this turn, Philip. Uh, no, in this turn, I really love to use Admiral Sloan, but yeah, pity. How many of your games, Philip, do you lose Sloan first? About 35, 40% maybe. Even if you manage to, to kill Feroff, there is still five ships with five HP and two green ties. Yeah, and spoke slightly too soon there. We were getting quite happy about Ray, and she did very, very well. And then from the last two shots, uh, thanks to a combination of some good dice and a direct hit, has taken five damage. Uh, so all of a sudden, on to health. Going to live into the next turn, probably get one more shot. Uh, but I, I struggle to see her getting out of it. Um, we're meant to be uh, telling people how to beat these lists. So, Philip, do you think that Ed's plan of, of going for Feral first is correct? Is that is that how you would play against your list? Mm. Uh, yes, yes. Um, mm, that was a very good tactic. Uh, but I think that the main mistake uh, was uh, to disengage ZZ for two turns. Because if he chooses to turn right, 
and go to my edge of the board. That would be really complicated for me to, to choose my target priority. And uh, at this point, when ZZ uh, came previous turn uh, to, to fight, um, I managed to uh, almost kill Ray and scare off Talisan, right? Yeah, and so we haven't yet had a turn of the game where all three ships have had good quality shots. And I think, um, Ed, maybe you can speak to that. I think that's a really valuable point of Phillips. I think you've flown two thirds of your list really nicely, but just that slight hesitation was easy, which in a different game, in a different matchup, I think would have been sensible here is is making it look like you're slightly behind where you need to be in terms of the damage race. Yeah, no, I definitely am thinking at this point that I'm behind. And the aggressors had gone straight rather than curving round to come towards Ray on the turn previous to that, which I hadn't been expecting. So was a bit more nervous about, are they going to continue to go straight, be more aggressive towards easy than I was expecting? And so that led to me turning away. What I think is would have been sensible is if I had turned ZZ right, the worst case scenario of them going towards ZZ does mean that Ray is going at Feroff with no aggressors supporting Feroff. So that's probably still fine. Yeah, I think that would have been my thinking. And also with ZZ's ability to token stack, she would probably have survived through that turn. Yeah, and um, in this turn, you can see that thanks to that second arc and that Tiagressor's dial, you can choose to fly on the whole new level. It's the advantage of a lot of ships at the moment having that different ways of getting an extra arc. And here it's the dorsal turret, which really helps you. Yeah, it's got the dorsal really um, open up uh, ship style. And so Ray here, what we're assuming is going to be a parting shot uh, going into blue. Um, uh, because that's the sort of the one that Zizi's also got a good shot at. Uh, spends that thin blank uh, to get a target lock. Um, I think it declares re-rolling both dice uh, and then rolls them one at a time. Um, and ends I... up with the force uh, getting four hits. Oh, but two nice evades there. Uh, and Blue again taking two hits and one off half. Uh, this yeah, is no. starting to look a bit sad. It was unfortunate. The aim with obviously banking ZZ up was I didn't know which aggressor I was going to get a shot at with Ray, but I could boost ZZ in and hopefully therefore get two shots on. And so I'm, I was certainly hoping there was going to be a dead aggressor, but we see another evade come out and that is another ship on one health, which I am yes saying more times in this game than I was really hoping I was going to. Yeah, nice. So Zizi trying her best, uh, spending the focus and getting one back with her ability. Uh, but that aggressor getting the crucial evade there. So we get Tali's shot now. One hit. I don't spend the focus because I know I'm going to be in the side arc. And that turns out to be the correct choice. There's two natural evades there from the aggressor. And then we've got options here for these ties as well. Hit crit from blue. Alive on one health, and that is going to be enough. Uh, nothing Ray can do about that. Is in the front arc, could have added the blank, but at this point you don't have the two force left that you would have needed to evade that. Uh, and that, I believe, is a dead Ray. It is indeed. I'd spent my force to try and put, push the damage through on blue, so didn't in fact have, I think, any force left at that point. Which so, is sensible, because given the amount of shots you were facing, there was no way Ray is making out of this turn. We see there exactly what Philip was talking about, which is with the, with that side arc, he's being able to block with yellow and also get a shot onto ZZ, uh, but rolls two hits into two evades, so no harm done this turn. Uh, and just the one hit here, uh, and we get one evade from Tali. Important, as she is one off half. And she still has another shot to go. Uh, so two hits. Oh, I'm with the focus just OK. Yeah, no, it's important she stays off because at the moment I've halved blue. And if I halve two more aggressors, I'm ahead, which like could just be dealing two more damage if I do one damage to red and one damage to blue. Like It's obviously not going to be quite that simple in practice, but I definitely wanted 
there not to be five aggressors on the board when Ray went. It's a lot of ships which can block and just shoot back at A-wings. But yeah, I could potentially be two damage away from being ahead in the game. So it's definitely not over just yet. Yeah, this round is where the really fun begins because chasing A-wings uh, is really one of my favorite things to do in X-Wing because I usually play with Bartosz who plays five A-Wings and we are neighbors so we play a lot. So uh, chasing A-Wings is, is really something I love to do and really got me frustrated. <laughs> Well, that is terrifying. Did you tell Ed that at the time, or is he only learning that now? I am uh, learning it now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Bartosz, I would say, has had better results with A-Wings than I have. I mean, I will claim that's merely because I've never taken A-Wings to a tournament before, so we've yet to see what I can do with them, but I suspect it won't be quite that good. Uh, don't sell yourself short. I'm sure you'd be a uh, UK champion had you taken them last time. Um, so, as you say, two damage off the lead, potentially, and it isn't an easy task, um, but the two damaged aggressors are in shootable positions. I think that too hard with blue there is a really nice move, because I think if I was Ed here, I'd be considering the too hard to the left. Um, which no longer fits. Ed, did you see that as a potential block? What are we about to see uh, ZZ do here? We are about to see ZZ do the too hard left. Like I knew that going into the corner was potentially problematic, and I didn't know where orange and yellow were going to be. So the thought of hopefully too harding away, focus, rotate, plink away at blue to get an aggressor off the board was how I hoped this turn was going to be going. But obviously, I move around Tally, which is a more obvious thing to do, and then ZZ thuds straight into the side of the aggressor. Yeah, I wonder whether that's another case where the two straight into the corner w was such a bad move that maybe it was the correct move. It sounds like a silly thing to say, but, but maybe it would have been a more unexpected move for you to do. Um, as it is, uh, we get Tali's shot here. Gets the crit. Think about spending the focus. I think about it, but I, this is where if I was facing five ships and five arcs, then you can start to put the A-wings in places where they're only getting fired at by one ship. The fact that I'm facing five ships and ten arcs means that obviously Tali is now in range of potentially range of two ships. Green might be just out, but that's a risk. And I don't spend the focus because I can't afford to lose half of Tali then it's suddenly a much bigger mountain to climb. Yeah, and as it is, that that means you don't kill Blue, but I think that's still the right choice. I mean, killing Blue only is worth anything if Tali stays above half. Uh, so I think that's probably the right thing to do. Uh, ZZ here with no tokens, uh, taking a range two shot. Ooh, spends the focus for two hits. <laughs> but who needs tokens, Ed? ZZ with three evades. And now and gets we... the token. And so, yeah, as you say, if ZZ avoids the first shot, she becomes invincible. Yeah, uh, I was hoping that I was managed to get at least half of ZZ this round. But yeah, Natis was really at the best moment. Absolutely the right time. And then got the worst roll against the worst attack dice, which all independent variables, but it's very nice when it all lines up. Yeah, and so ZZ has, has got away with that bump, uh, has lived to fight another day, and I'm just down to Tali now to, to shrug off these incoming shots from these aggressors. First one, you think maybe shouldn't be too much trouble, got the focus and got the four dice. And just one hit there after the focus spend. I'll be hoping you can get away with this without spending your own focus, and you can, and that leaves this Actually, range three shot, so no shot there from the final guy. Uh, those dorsal turrets only out to range two. Uh, and on to the next turn. So I kind of got away with it there, Ed, a little bit, I think. Yeah, no, like, if ZZ had taken damage there, it would have been entirely fair and good reward for a good block with blue. But all still fine. No A-wing has been halved. 
and I'm certainly looking at yellow, looking at blue and going, I ought to be able to get the kill shot next turn is definitely the plan. Yeah, and I knew it that um, I need to be real careful now because even half of a ship uh, can lose uh, a game, right? So that was a real crucial moment. And Cormac, we saw Ed not spending the focus there. Um, I assume that Ed thought that, that Green had range on him with the Dorsal Toro, which I've got to say I did as well. Do you think that was the correct decision? It's really, really tricky because I was looking at myself and I was thinking if Tally wasn't down one shield, I think obviously you definitely spend it. I think the fact that Tally was so close to being halved probably just means he can't afford to risk it. Um, the A wings still have time to do those two halves to, of two aggressors. So I think it probably was the best decision not to spend it. And so we see the aggressors here sort of wheeling round, uh, obviously want to spread the net again, make sure these A-wings don't get cheap shots. We saw last turn, even though they did no damage, uh, the fact that those arcs were there and they were threatening actually is what kept Blue alive. It's what meant that Tali couldn't spend. Blue coming round here. Oh, nice barrel roll. I like that. That's potential kind of block onto yellow and able to take the evade. And sensibly turning down board from ZZ like that I think I think sort of getting in behind the list couldn't be blocked by blue this turn nice shot onto brown although unfortunately brown is full the barrel getting very good position there like tally I was banking away because I wanted to try and get distance on from red and green but because they barreled in rather than having a nice range one take the focus we're all fine I doubt don't have a shot with tally and as ever with A-Wings It'd be wonderful if they could do free actions because boost away, rotate, get focus would be lovely. But I'm definitely sitting there and going, I've got to have a focus because there are going to be too many shots. And that means I possibly can't get a shot on blue this turn. Yeah, with the arc currently facing forwards, you need to kind of yeah boost and rotate. And as you say, that leaves you sat with no focus. The same problem as last turn and you can't afford to get halved. Um, so do take the focus. Take the straight boost, which is very sensible, getting out of Blue's arc, and actually looking there like you are now probably only taking shots from yellow. Um, nice range one shot here from CZ, who's all of a sudden in quite a nice position. Yeah, the... I really like this position from ZZ. Got behind. It's not easy for the other, the other aggressors to come back. It probably gives you a couple of turns to try and plink some more damage into them. I really like the turn towards the bottom of the board. Yeah, And with Optics there getting hit, hit, crit. Uh, but some more good defense dice uh, from Brian. Spends his focus to avoid the crit and just takes the shield there. Um, Ahead, you've got to be hoping that one of these, these big rolls goes through at some point. Yeah, certainly. I mean, it is always the case with two green dice ships. Like there are the games when they just melt and there are the games when they seem invincible. But like this is really suffering for them not only getting one turn of Ray shooting aggressors. Like both in terms of the blocking, the number of arcs and etc. Ray can punch through two green dice and A wings simply just can't occasionally. So it is what it is. Yeah, and again, for, due to Phillips sort of nice maneuvering and putting pressure on it, we're still in a situation where you're not getting both A-Wings firing, certainly not with, with good shots every turn. And that's kind of meaning that it's taken a very long time to chew these aggressors down. Uh, range one shot here into ZZ. Uh, only one, thankfully, thanks to that focus spend. Uh, and ZZ has to spend hers to not take any damage. Yellow now has choices. So we've got the range two obstructed into ZZ, and that's the better shot because of the lack of focus. So that's what Philip goes for. Well, a little bit unlucky there, only getting the one hit. Into four dice. Ooh, that takes it. Yes, that frustrating. If that could just have been a fourth blank, then all would have yeah, been fine. No. That is the worst roll for heroic A-wings. And yeah. as we saw... Uh, Tali having got herself out of the other arcs. Um, so not as disastrous as, as if Tali had taken that damage, uh, but certainly not great now having both of your A-wings at risk of being halved. Decent opportunity here, I think. We asked Philip earlier in the game about uh, whether you had the right approach in focusing Ferroff and 
if that's what he would advise other people to do. In terms of your list, Ed, I, I think I'd agree with Philip's assertion that Ray just has to go. Um, what else have you found difficult? Are there sort of particular types of lists that you've run into that have caused problems for this Ray Wings build? The lists I've had the biggest trouble with are lists with a lot of ships and particularly like ships I can't one shot. Like I've not played against this aggressor Sloan Swarm before. I played the Rack and four academies and that is fine because Ray can one shot the academies. It's not guaranteed to happen, but it's going to happen a lot more than the Imperial player wants it to. Um, yeah, it's Tie Fighters. They can always die, right? Yeah, but it's the it's lists like this where I can't take stuff off the board quickly enough, so the shot's coming in on Ray, and Ray dies and leaves the A-Wings too much of a job. Aces, even Initiative 6 Aces, are generally fine because they have to be so cautious. Like, if you get one and someone plays it perfectly, then... Ah, it's a bad game, you got outplayed, but they just have to make one mistake and Ray has told Von Reg to go take a shower, you're done. So aces are generally fine because they have to be so cautious. It's the beefy lists that are definitely the problem. So stuff yeah. that can outtrade Ray by the sound of things. Yeah, absolutely. And I've played against Ray Wings a couple of times now and what I've found myself is depending on the list I'm running, it will change my target priority because if I have um, a limited number of ships, because generally I will only be flying three or four ships, if I focus down on Ray, I may have lost too much that I will never get the damage into the A-Wings because sometimes you just need to be able to block A-Wings and otherwise their tokens will mean that you won't get the damage into them. So sometimes you have to go for the A-Wings first because despite the fact that Ray is really scary and putting a lot of damage into you, you will be able to kill Ray a lot easier later game with some lists, um, but you might not be able to kill an A-Wing. Yeah, Ray is going to take damage even from one ship firing at her, whereas one ship versus an A-Wing, you better hope that your ship is more valuable because... Yeah. You may never shoot at it again, let alone do damage. Uh, yeah, in this case, I need to kill Ray quickly, or probably I will lose that matchup. Nice. And so we see another good range one shot here uh, coming in from ZZ. Um, but more good evade dice from Brown, resulting in a further only one hit and another aggressor that is one off giving up points. Um, and then a, a two... Two hits uh, from Tarly, uh, but into three natural evades and, and no further damage done. And now we've got some shots coming to ZZ. Uh, so this is green here, I believe, firing in. Uh, one yeah. hit and one natural evade from ZZ there. ZZ's still having the focus because of her ability. Really like Green's move over the debris cloud. Part of the reason for turning ZZ right and heading down through this corner is assuming that Red and Green would be that bit more out of the fight. But Green just went over the debris cloud. And so I'm now, next turn, going to have to worry about Green blocking slash getting rage one shots. Yeah, and, and a good ship to do it, right? Because it's not your target. It's not something that's taken damage. And, and, and Philip can definitely afford to do that. A nice shot coming in here. Tally managed to avoid um, the shot at range three by getting her natural evades, which was what Ed needed at this point. Mm, yeah, but this turn I forced Ed to run away with Tally, but in case he, if he managed to, to kill one of my full Thai aggressor with ZZ, then I would lose on points, right? So I choose with orange to barrel with evade to block potentially two or three move for ZZ and then to set a trap and try to kill her to secure point score. Yeah, and do you find the blocking even e easier with the aggressors than with the ties? Because I think it's back to what you were saying about those arcs. You've really limited ZZ's options here in terms of where she can go, um, but done so in a way that almost every ship, if it isn't the ship that gets the block, is still going to have a shot. 
Yeah, and that uh, Tiagrasil dial with combination uh, with dorsal turret is really great because you can do one straight, one bank, uh, turn around a turret, or do barrel roll with evade. So it's 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 really good. Yeah, and we see another block ZZ here. Yeah, uh, I'd hoped Orange was going to bank around and so the straight would just dive me around the side and try and get ZZ out, but was called and we are now seeing a whole bunch of shots going. But luckily that first shot unmodded is only the one hit uh, and similar situations last time evaded and now you've got the focus for this follow-up shot. Uh, don't need it, two hits. Not sure which direction Blue's guy's arc facing, uh, but yellow here has a another shot. Another two hits. <laughs> and Zizi really, really trying to hang on there for you. Uh, spends yeah. the focus, but still alive. And I think Blue's arc is to the right. Uh, and and although another nice block, Philip, but, but again, an another turn where you don't get the reward. Yeah, that's the worst part if you lose uh, Sloan, because a wings like to, to stress. So... Yeah, or even if they accidentally kill a uh, Thai aggressor or something, if you still have Reaper, then it's it's really a big advantage, right? Here, uh, I had um, a lack of uh, modification. Yeah, we've seen the amount of shots that you've rolled into, as you say, A-wings that were often stressed, where you've ended up with the one bit of paint and had even half of those uh, been, been two hits, I think we would have been looking at a game that is probably already over. Uh, but nevertheless, you're in a nice position. Um, still tricky for ZZ to get out of trouble this turn. Uh, and they really tightening the noose here. And these three aggressors all in horrible positions for ZZ and, and yellow following up as well. And even blue getting in the act this turn. Ed, obviously you've got to get Tali back in quickly here. You're still only two half aggressors off winning, but you are still two half aggressors off winning. Um, and we're coming towards the final few turns of the game here now, I think. Yeah. No, like, it's not a good position. Philip's flown the aggressors well, but five aggressors, yeah, with the arcs and being able to be that bit more casual about where they're pointing because of those second arcs. Like, you don't have to keep them pointing it at the A-wings. Um, so I hoped a free hard might slip round past and I could start boosting away. But again, blocked by orange and... At least this time, ZZ gets to take her focus from the attack. Yeah, and it might be an important attack. There's two hits there. Oh, and the natural evade, evades token and the bow roll away, both seeming like very good decisions. Uh, and Blue is still alive. But as you say, ZZ at least gets the focus before she started to take any fire. Um, has got three shots coming in here. First at range one. Focus spend for two hits. Uh, rolls two focuses and spends. Apologies to the viewers here. The recording gets a bit jumpy from this point on, but uh, we've only got a couple of turns left, and I think the quality of the game is uh, is good enough to put up with it. And we'll talk you through the dice rolls. Um, another two hits uh, from this aggressor behind is easy, and only one of eight this time. So that is big. That is a half points on ZZ. and all of a sudden that two halves an aggressor becomes, I think, two whole aggressors. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, I think I, ZZ does absolutely deserve to take some damage there. Like, but that was the probable hopes of me trying to salvage something with this game going up in smoke, as even with free of eight dice, you can't dodge everything, however much you might want to. Yeah, and even yellow there at range two, chipping in with a further damage. And so ZZ down to one. Maths wise, Philip is up 123 to 74. At 28 points each, Ed needs two aggressors. Uh, so he's essentially looking at doing six damage minimum uh, with two two dice guns. That's sounding unlikely, Ed. Yeah, no, I, I am like, you can never say never, but I am absolutely at this point not expecting to win this game. It's the A-Wings needed to do some damage and get out, and Philip has played very well, and ZZ has done ab exactly the opposite of getting out, and also has done the exact opposite of dealing damage, but 
Ah, oh, well. And Philip, I mean, very nicely played, I think. Just very solid play, sensible moves. Um, even losing Ferro early on, you didn't panic. You just kind of stuck to your task and kept getting those blocks and, and looked like you've eventually got the reward. With all lists, uh, if you face someone as good as you, you're going to struggle. This is an incredibly strong list and flown by a pilot as good as you. I think it's going to be difficult for anyone to beat. But having said that, what would your advice be for perhaps newer players picking up the slow and aggressive swarm or for the rest of us having to face it? To have open mind in case of flying with Thai aggressors because mm, comparing to Thai fighters or even Thai interceptors is really a big difference. So my advice is to practice, to keep in mind that positioning uh, with dorsal turret will, uh, can be crucial and can be win condition in most of the matchups. So it's all about keeping your options open with those dorsal turrets. Yeah, and learning how the type aggressor dial because uh, 95 of my opponents uh, on the tournaments was like, uh, okay, so what maneuver uh, Thai aggressor have? Or, uh, whoa, Thai aggressor? So it's, it's a ship or it's what? <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, and that is really good advice. I think I think for anybody, um, if you want to beep something, you certainly need to to play against it uh, in practice, and and ideally play with it. And I think that's the, a great way to sort of learn the strengths and weaknesses of something. Um, and Ed, I suppose same question to you from your point of view. Um, what's what's the key to overcoming the Ray Wings build? If you don't have that tanky, beefy list, are you done for, or are there things you can do? I think. The first thing to remember, especially if you're playing aces, is remember how fast Ray is. Like, there's not a lot of boosting large Ray ships in 2.0. And, like, a lot of the games where I have won comfortably and sort of tabled my opponent with 30, 40 minutes left have been because they've dropped an ace directly opposite Ray and gone, I can one hard and barrel and just sit here and it will be fine because it's always fine and then ray four forwards boosts and it's very much not fine so be aware of how fast ray can go and try and get those turns when you can get multiple ships shooting ray at the same time because if you're trading one on one ray is going to win that trade every time but if you can get lots of ships shooting at ray she will take damage one of a dice and not a lot of force saved for defense means she will just burn and if you can get that early fire on burn down there's always a chance of putting crits in and suddenly ray is then a lot less scary slash once you've got her off the table a wings have a lot of trouble putting lots of damage through you won't harm them easily but they're probably not going to harm you easily either so as long as you're ahead, it's not game over, but you're a long way there. Yeah, great advice. I think I have been that player against you of dangling Sintir out, assuming it would be fine, and then looking on in horror as Ray four straight forwards and boosts at me turn after turn. I was in that club as well. <laughs> <laughs> and in case of my list, if you want to know how to beat, remember that the doors are to turret is range one and two only absolutely so if you can approach from that side arc and stay at range three there's a chance of getting unanswered shots although with a lot of lists that's easier said than done and so just some housekeeping there for the final turn of the game um we saw ed bringing everything in in a sort of valiant attempt to to clutch victory from the jaws of defeat uh but Actually, uh, the bumps finally paid off, and we saw Tali go to half, uh, and Zizi get uh, uh, get blown up um, for a nice 173 point to 74 point win. I thought very nicely flown, Philip. But actually, I think probably the score is is a more convincing victory. I thought that was a closer game uh, uh, than that, and I thought Ed, you did a very nice job as well. A few a few damage swings either way, and that could have that could have been different. Um, I totally so, agree. Uh, that was really close game, and uh, I don't know that last turn of shooting uh, really does matter. And yeah. um, 
and obviously it's a friendly game which we're just playing for the channel like would have dived everything in there with Tali to get the points in the tournament probably you save MOV but it's like if I had shot red killed red and killed orange with nonsense crits then that would be the win so you go for it and well in a shock twist, it doesn't turn up because obviously it doesn't turn up. The the biggest disappointment for me of uh, of uh, what was a really interesting chat during that last turn is uh, you actually missed another opportunity to use Tali's uh, ability there, uh, which I was looking forward to remind you of it. Um, oh well, like I am looking <laughs> forward to the other. See what the points are on the i5 from Heralds of Hope, just because it has a terrible ability, but. If it's cheaper and I'm not using Tali's ability anyway, well. So that would be a nice topic to end the video on. Um, let's live in a magical fantasy land for a moment and assume that Fantasy Flight do something uh, to take the Nantex out of the game. Um, Philip, starting with you, your list at that point starts to look really very good. Um, do you think that there's anything else in the game that, that really gives it trouble? I think that's still Ray with Nian Nam is really a strong counter. For that stress mitigation. Yeah, and uh, especially uh, Nian Nam. Um, but in world of uh, where is, there is no spam text, there is a couple good lists. For example, for Auzitux and AP5 is, uh, in my opinion, one of the most powerful lists in this meta. Another six. Thai FO with uh, Malarus is also a really good list, but in case of Swarm combination, in my opinion, the two most stable list uh, is Thai Aggressor Clone Swarm and New Republic Swarm with uh, Warthog. In case of lists that are a challenge for Thai Aggressors, I think like always some um, ace archetype in the hand of a really good player yeah i think that's always true isn't it and that's one of the, one of the good things about x-wing is that if you play well enough almost with as long as you've got a reasonable list you've got a chance um interesting you mentioned a lot of swarms there uh just a little bit of foreshadowing of our next episode have you faced five of the hmp gunships yet uh, no but after this week maybe I will try to, to figure something out with, with that ship because stabilizers are really interesting and I love to, to see them in action. Well, uh, stay tuned for, for the next episode after this one. Um, we're hopefully going to have that list on and I think we in the 186 think it might be quite good. Although, obviously, this is in our magic make-believe no Nantex land. Um, so, same question to Ed. Uh, your list, uh, how do you see it going forward? Is it something you're going to stick with for a while? I'm enjoying it. The list I was running before jumping on the ZZ and Tally was the uh, Ray Kova ZZ list, which I really enjoyed. Like The flexibility it gives Ray is just a lot of fun. I will have blue two hearts on my large base incredible dice modifications ship. That is so... You can't, I think, run it in this environment. Cover is points which the Nantex can go over and pick up kind of whenever they want to. So that's why I moved to the two I-5A wings, both with mm -hmm. rockets. You're not favoured against Nantex, I don't think, but you have a puncher's chance. So in a magical non-Nantex world, I definitely would immediately drop back to the Ray Cover's easy build to see how that goes it felt more fun whether it's necessarily better i'd i'd need to see about it nice and um i suppose that leaves it to cormac to final thoughts um on the lists on the game and and on what we've heard today um well a couple of things i think the interesting thing from both perspectives is i think they both had distinct target priorities that they went for so obviously ed needed to take out sloan first Philip was really wanting to take out Ray first and they both succeeded at that but I think the cost who succeeded more was obviously Philip because by that time he had more ships left on the board 
But I think it's a good lesson in target priority. They went for the right things. Um, and it's important to know that from the start. I think the lists are interesting. And I think the Ray is now at a very solid points cost that she is unlikely to go up a dramatic amount. And I think we'll see Ray Zizi, whose ability is very, very good. And I think there are two solid pieces in the resistance that are going to be here for a probably at least this points change and probably the next points change. Um, and they're solid pieces to add to any resistance list. So I kind of feel like you need to be practicing against them and just having ideas what I'm going to do or how I'm going to approach it. And similarly, from the Imperial point of view, I think Admiral Sloan has been something that has just stayed under the radar. It was seen a lot at the very start of one point or of 2.0, but it after that initial kind of um, brief where it was in a lot of lists, it hasn't been as prevalent, but you see it there and it's not enough to always go up in points, but I think it's, as Philip has done here, he's made a really effective list with it. And I think that Sloan is something that will probably just stay roughly around about the same points and you will always see a, a list built around it. So again, I think you always need to be thinking about it whenever you are creating your own list. How do I approach Sloan? Which the aggressors at the moment are a really good build for it, but the next point change, there may be another ship that's a really good build for it. So I think these are pieces that we're probably going to see going forward, regardless of what happens with points changes. Nice. And I don't have anything intelligent to add to that. That was some, uh, a great game. Uh, great insight from both of you, uh, Ed uh, and Philip. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, awesome summing up there, Cormac. Honestly, I couldn't think of anything extra to add to that. Um, and thanks for joining us again. And thanks for everyone for watching. Um, stay tuned in two weeks' time uh, to see the new 186th Super List. Um, <laughs> caveat, it may not be any good. Um, the caveat, the rest of us may not agree. Yeah. <laughs> That's very true. Um, and, uh, uh, and we'll see you then. Thanks very much, everyone. Yeah, uh, I want to only add uh, that thank you, Ed, for uh, amazing game. Thank you to um, 186 Squadron uh, for invite and hope to see you soon offline, right? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely in real life. Yeah, Thanks no, very much. Thank you, Philip, for the game and thank you for having me on. <laughs>